your reality changes when you got four walls of ocean around you. <laughs> Especially there's no cell phone, there's no Instagram, like it's just you're there and that's your whole life now. Um, it, it's a great pleasure today to be speaking with Carl Janice, the director and one of the writers of Passage. Uh, Carl, thanks so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Well, I, I'm looking forward to talking about this because Passage is a really interesting project. But I mean, let's start at the beginning. Where? How did the? How did it come to be? How did the series come to be? Yeah. Um, so this journey for me actually starts almost four years ago. Uh, Reflector Entertainment, who is the creator of the Unknown Nine universe, the creator of Unknown Nine Awakening, which is the big video game that launched today that Passage is attached to. Um, they've been working on this story world for years, the better part of a decade. And so four years ago, they reached out and said, hey, you know, we've got a podcast, we've got a comic book, we've got a book series, and we've got this big video game that's coming out eventually. Um, and we want someone to do scripted media. We want someone to do series work. Uh, and so they had myself and a bunch of other creators sort of pitch ideas. I'm very lucky and very blessed that they liked the cool stuff that I pitched, even though uh, they were like, okay, that's cool. We're not going to do any of it. But Here's what we had liked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it started four years ago, and it was actually a series. Um, the first series was The Taylor Files, which is yet to be released, but you'll see more media about that soon. Um, and then after that was fully complete, they came back around and said, okay, we want one more, and that's Passage. And Passage is really special because it actually takes place at the end of Awakening, um, which is why we are launching it first. So Awakening has a sort of end date to it, and Passage takes place just two years after that. Um, so that's kind of where the journey started. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering about that relationship because I've seen the trailer for, I, I'm not, I admit I'm not familiar with Awaken. I've never played it, but I saw the trailer. It looks great. Um, so I was cold coming into the series hmm. and, and I'm watching, I'm like, these, these really look fantastic, but they do have a unique relationship. Like I, I guess my first expectation was that it was a straight adaptation but that's not quite how it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. So without giving uh, too much away, um, because obviously Gate Awakening just launched today. And so I, I want people the opportunity to like not spoil the ending for them. Without giving too much away, we have one of the main story characters from Awakening who is represented by one of our performers uh, in Passage. So we have one of the main characters. Um, they talk of things that happen in Awakening throughout Passage. And then uh, the main antagonist in Awakening it plays a big role in our show as well. Ah, uh, okay. That because it really is the show's a ton of fun. It is so much fun, and I love the atmosphere, the claustrophobic atmosphere. Which, you know, as somebody as a gamer, like that's just that's just what you want, right? Like this sort of intense closed spaces is beautiful. Um, what what are the challenges though of that? Because that's a really unique way. It's always unique to adapt a game into a into a series or a film. We you know that's happened before. But even the way that, that you've done this here, what, what are the challenges of bringing that to life and having the same effect? Yeah, um, that's a fully loaded question. And I guess, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> to, like, to like reiterate that, like uh, nothing in their world, nothing in the Unknown Nine universe is adaptive in any sort of way right now. They, the Reflector Entertainment has designed almost 150 years worth of history Wow. between their game and the comic book series which takes place in the modern day and the book series which explores like the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and like they have done so much work building this entire story universe and so for me what it felt like coming in is getting a playground to play in and and learning the rules of this playground how do things operate here because they've done a really good job of saying you know we had some very strict rules as we were as we were going through writing these shows like anything that happened in reality happened here there you can't say like big world figures never existed because like that's that happened but you can say if something with ambiguity like a boat crossing the atlantic ocean or the actions of the cia or what have you like secret agencies and services like you can really play into that creatively and say okay this is now you know the ascendance this is that now the leap year society which is our two primary sort of warring factions in awakening and throughout the n09 universe um for myself as a creator, like I, I grew up as a gamer. I love story worlds, obviously. You know, we talked about the Star Wars poster here. Um, it was the perfect playground to play within because the the narrative team in Reflector gave a lot of free reign when it was like, tell us your characters. What characters do you want to like? How do things work in this world? 
just know that like these are kind of the guideposts like this is where you're playing in but like we're not going to write the story for you it's anything you want to do any story you want to tell and what's cool about that is once you sort of have those guideposts you sort of you come back to the first principles of what we do as storytellers which is like we tell stories about um, heroes we tell stories about family we tell stories about redemption and like you start to to find which one of those you want to fit into this world that that's really cool and it, it, that was actually one of the things i wanted to ask because i mean adapting any property co- brings its own sort of like rules as you said mm-hmm. but they gave you it sounds like they gave you a lot of freedom to to take these characters even though it's directly related to this game that that is just dropping today as we speak uh, yeah and i i have to toss so much credit to uh, thomas street who is their now like narrative designer um, without throughout the process, he's been the IP producer, like director of narrative. He's had a, a couple of different titles in the four years we've worked together on this, but it all boiled down to like it's his job to, you know, put the helmet on and understand how this world sort of operates. And I, out of everyone on the team, like you know, we're on the ground, we're in all sorts of different places around the world trying to tell the story. And you know, he gave me access to his personal phone number, like literally call him nine o'clock at night. Hey, would this character say this? No, no, no. He never. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and that I feel like that relationship gave so much freedom to be like, because they were really good about being like, if it's not already written and it's not already in history, do whatever tells the mm-hmm. best story. Like characters are allowed to make mistakes. They're allowed to believe things that might not even be true. Um, and they're allowed to exist within the story world. And I think what they've done with this, with the unknown nine universe is really, really special and really unique. And I, I'm so grateful to have gotten to play within this because I know, you know, both witnessing Star Wars, but even having friends that have gone the opportunity to play in that world or play in the Marvel world. It's like, you do have so much more structure to get the comic books to base things off of, or here you have novels, you have an entire story database. We kind of were just like, it's world history plus, plus magic, plus like, what, what they call the fold, like this sort of extra set of powers you can toss behind things. I love that. I love that. I think that's really cool and and gives you a lot of freedom, uh, like you said, to, to play in the sandbox, you know, uh, which I think is really, really cool. And, and uh, you know, these, these characters are really fun. Um, and this, you know, this maniacal doctor, if you will, I can't think of his name. I'm sorry. What is it? Uh, do you, the, the, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, that's it. Um, and and his machinations, as you will, uh, as the as the series unfolds. But I, I was wondering for you, as as the one who brought this story to life, this is a film where you see these these characters fighting their inner darkness. Mm. And I was wondering to you, what is the the dark the the greatest darkness within man or these characters, if you want to be specific? Ooh. Um, that's a very important question. Um, because I think, you know, we, as storytellers, we do this work because we are here trying to mirror life. You know, I've always, ever since I was 17, getting into film, I've seen it that way. It's like film and TV is this sort of twisted mirror that we turn on ourselves to learn about who we are, um, and who we can be and who we were. Um, and the biggest theme running through our writer's room as we were, um, developing this story was, what are the lies we tell ourselves and in not just like you know tell your kids that santa claus is real um i hope you don't have kids as your audience actually you might want to read that <laughs> <laughs> um, greenfish will neither confirm nor deny the existence of santa claus and we move on that's <laughs> exactly um but you know the lies we tell ourselves uh is such an important theme that i think runs throughout and really helped me find uh each of these characters and and the writers all the writers in the writers room like um i think that when you lie to yourself um you you sort of twist who you are and you turn yourself into a version of yourself that you might not fully recognize but you're willing to wear that mask and as time goes on that lie sort of takes shape and changes things until one day you might end up looking in the mirror and realizing you've done something that you never thought you would do it's like it's a very it's a it's a, a, to, a story older than time is like, how did I get here? How did I become this person? And it all starts with that, that lie, you know, and, and I always try to remind myself, it's like one of my mantras, I guess, like somebody 
who inflicts pain upon you or lies to you, it's like, imagine what they're doing to themselves. Always imagine like what, what lies are they telling themselves? What are they inflicting upon themselves that they would inflict that upon you? Um, and that I think really helped me find these characters uh, as much as I could. You know, I, I'm really glad you said that because one of the things uh, that intrigued me or there's a line in the script that I thought was really intriguing and it's that a happy lie is better than a sad truth. Mm. And I was wondering if you thought that was true. Is a happy lie better than a sad truth? I mean, you know, zombie apocalypse aside, if you will. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. You know, um... Hmm. I think it depends on who you who you want to be. Um, I, you know, I guess I always sort of come back to that. It's like um, if living a lie, you know, you get from point A to point B, you get from zero to eighty, you get to the end of your life, and you're happy. Then yeah, it's you kind of get to decide how you spend your time here. Um, I think I am the type, you know, I can probably answer for myself. I am the type of person to want to know the sad truth, but I'm also the type of person that like, if someone comes to me and they're like, Oh, like, you know, I know something about so-and-so I'll very much. I was like, I, I don't want to know, mm. <laughs> you know, blissful ignorance. I'm like, yeah. I, ignorance is blissful in a lot of ways, especially when it's something that doesn't fully impact you. Um, but I would say for myself as a human being, um, I, I will always sort of choose, uh, the sad truth. Yeah, that's me, though. <laughs> well, and, it, you know, like you said, this this relationship between truth and lies is is so big within this series. And amidst all the the fun and the delusions and the, you know, the swapping of uh, memories and visions and all these things, there's this sort of question of, do you want to know? Mm -hmm. And and not, not everybody does. They're quite happy where they are, you know, in their own... The, Dr. Emanuel is, you know, very content with his own set system of of beliefs and ideas that, that just aren't reality, if you will. Uh, and, and that's, um, do you mind if I build off that first? Not, not at all. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, I think that, like, in, in doing the work of writing the script, that sort of came up a lot um, because, uh, you know, cliche, cliche artists, we want to talk about the world. Um Objective truth is more difficult to find because um, evidence-based resources are um, becoming diluted and changing. And it seems as though in a lot of ways you can find evidence to form any narrative, any any uh, justification for your reality, your ontology. Um, and so what I really wanted to explore that was that like, yeah, like that lie that you tell yourself at first you do everything in your power to reinforce that. Like once you have decided who you are, you look for all of the answers around you. You know, we are uh, uh, meaning making machines as human beings. We find meaning in everything. Yeah. And once you've decided what the world is to you, you do everything in your power to make that your reality. And I do think part of that comes back to the idea. It's like a time, a question as old as time itself, predating any form of you know faith or religion. It's like, we don't really know what reality or ontology is we just know what occurs to us and so eventually you do have this fork in the road and, and we explored this a lot in the writer's room it's like when you know asking questions to my fellow writers like when have you had this divergence where it's like you and a parent or you and a lover or you and whoever just had the same thing happen but when you compare notes you're like different yeah. things happen and then how do you reconcile that and eventually what happens when you keep going down those roads because it's happened to all of us yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. There are moments that shape the way we view everything, mm. um, and, or deconstruct it, if you will. You know, mm. this is this is what I thought the world, the way I thought the world worked, and now I see that there's something else. Mm. Um, I think we get, you know, we're we can we can get so absorbed in our own interpretations and visions that it can. It can uh, affect the way we interact. And it, it, you see that, I mean, again, you see that in these characters as well. They're, they're trapped in their own realities, even as things are unfolding around them, yeah. uh, which is part of the fun, which is part of the fun of the, of the show. Absolutely. Um, well, I think that's what made the show so fun because like you realize that they're just, and, and, you know, we doing a lot of research for this. Like we went and read, I went to um, 
uh, you know, I live on the coast here. And so there's actually a marine library and they'll take in like documents, you know, it's if a ship is whatever salvaged. Da, da, da. And so I, I literally read people's like notebooks from like 1962 da, 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 being at being at sea. Your reality changes when you got four walls of ocean around you, <laughs> especially there's no cell phone. There's no Instagram. Like it's just you're there and that's your whole life now. And and that really gave us the freedom to be like, oh, yeah, they're all kind of losing their minds. <laughs> And, and and even in the normalist of circumstances, and then you've got this extra little twist on the edge, which is the unknown nine part of it is the main antagonist kind of feeding all of that. It's like, I, I really wanted to portray that because I, I think that, you know, cliche as it is, you know, we all went through this one catalytic event four years ago, uh, myself, yourself, everyone who's listening to this. And when we all got locked in our houses, everyone got to look at the world in a different way, but the world became your walls. The world became your three people you could invite over to your house within a few months like and that really shifted the way people saw their reality and their ontology and it made me realize that reality really forms as a mutual consensus it's not something that that we all just get installed with it's like reality is what we all say it is um so yeah that's kind of what led there that is that's really fascinating and yeah absolutely i mean in this in a scenario like this like like passage and again, like I said, it sort of leans into that video game aspect, but they're just contained. Mm -hmm. You know, anything outside of the walls of that ship is just water. So, it, yeah, it, there's a certain sort of psychological breakdown that's taking place within these characters while there's more happening with these characters, of course. Um, honestly, Carl, I, we're starting to run out of time. It, it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. I, I, I really appreciate the chance to chat with you. Um, but, uh, you know, how can people, uh, find passage, uh, when it, when it drops, how can the people find it and, uh, what do you hope people take away from it? Ooh. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, passage will be launched on Bandai Namco's YouTube channels as well as on their website. Um, and I believe they have some plans, uh, later on when the two series are out for a different launch avenue, but I can't really speak to that. So right now, you know, it's free, it'll go free to air all episodes, um, YouTube and the website. Uh, just unknown nine. If you Google unknown nine, you'll be able to find it. Uh, what do I hope they take away from it? I hope you guys have a good time. I don't know. Um, truly, yeah. I, I like you know. I can sort of espouse all this uh, philosophy. This is my my journey on this world. Um, but I think that's the fun job we have as storytellers is like you get to sort of interject this. Like, well, here's one way of looking at the world, or one sort of way to question things. But at the end of the day, I, I hope it's a really enjoyable experience. I hope you love the characters. Um, you know, my performers worked tirelessly to bring them to life. And I have to give all the credit to them because they were just names on a page until we cast them, until our, our casting director found these incredible human beings. Um, so, yeah, I hope you fall in love with these characters. And maybe if you fall in love hard, hard enough, they'll get to come back. <laughs> uh, honestly, I hope we do. I hope we do. Yeah. Uh, Carl, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I wish you the best. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Steve. It was great. Thank you.